Okay, welcome to the XML Primer. Uh, we're going to start off this next section of videos in which we're going to cover uh, XML web services. And I'm going to start off with a about a 200,000 foot view of XML in case you're not familiar with it. Now, if you are, you may want to skip this video. But XML is a, basically a graduation of HTML. And I want to show you this by showing you some code. Now, just by looking at this, what can you tell me about it? Well, if you know HTML, about all we can determine from these numbers is that this HTML code is going to display this number, and it's going to display it at a uh, heading level 3 size, which tells us, you know, relative uh, to other text on the page, what size it is. Then there's going to be a little bit smaller number here and it's going to be 78.32 don't know if that's a price don't know if that's a weight don't know if uh, exactly what that is some sort of measurement of it and then there's going to be one little bit smaller heading level six and it's going to be 62.5 that's all we know we're going to have three numbers on a page on a web page this one will be the largest this one will be the next largest and this one will be the smallest now that's using html because it's primarily a markup language now, what if I show you the same numbers like this? Well, suddenly everything's changed, right? We can now tell 786978 is a part number, 7832 is the cost, and 625 is obviously the pounds or some sort of metric measurement, but it's the ship weight. That's what it weighs for shipping. Now, this is XML. It is a markup language that causes the data to be self-describing. It's human readable, it's self-describing, and it's a World Wide Web Consortium standard. Now you can go to uh, w3c.org org, on the internet and you can look at the absolute bottom line standards for how XML should be. Now let me give you some advice if you're ever having trouble sleeping at night go out to the World Wide Web Consortium uh, page and do some reading. It'll take care of the problem quickly. This is not John Grisham type material. It's very technical, very dry material but if you really want to know what's going on under the hood and why go out and read this stuff. Now Obviously, you can see from my example, XML is extensible. We create our own tags with their own meaning and use them to describe our data. And then we use cascading style sheets or other technologies to actually format the size and color of these things in our browser. Now, this is the beauty of XML. Anybody who can read XML can read our file. We don't care if they're on the Apple platform, the Unix platform, uh, the Windows platform, whatever. If they can read the W3C standard on XML, they can now read and know what our data means. There's also a situation where if we pull data, let's say we have a database out here. If we pull data into a web page and it's HTML data, then we have data, but it's only good in the context of how it was queried. And so if we want to like query this data again, we're going to have to go back to the web server and pull it again and come back and format it as HTML again to know what it meant. I hope that makes sense to you. But let's look at the reverse of that or the uh, XML solution to that. Here's our database. We query the database and we grab some information and drop it into XML format. And now we can look at the tags and see what the data means. It self describes. So if we need to query this data, we can go up here and query just the XML data and so now we don't have to go back to the web server and so we can go back and query this data and get clarification on it to use down here two or more times I mean there's no limit to it so notice this is right here it's going to save us multiple trips back to the database there is all kind of cool things about XML what I'm going to show you in the next couple of videos is how to create a web service we're going to talk about what they are how to create them and how to use them, you will find this fascinating. XML web services are absolutely driving the market right now. And thanks to Visual Studio, you're going to be shocked at how simple these things are to uh, set up and use. And uh, we're going to look at using them uh, just as XML web services and then using uh, uh, proxies from within Visual Studio.net. So um, these um, next few videos, I tell you, are worth uh, the price of the course, no doubt.